there is like, I, I, I've had more conversations. I feel like in the past, I don't know, six weeks about this general sense of everything is like, like th this beyond malaise. Like, uh, like there is a, there is a pre-apocalyptic feeling, uh, that is out there. And it's, it's it's strange in some ways because you know you got Jamie Diamond. I don't really listen to Jamie Diamond that much, as you know. But uh, I mean, he was like apparently saying like, "There's a there's a hurricane coming," you know. I guess financially speaking, there is um, a, a broad sense of like you know we don't know what's going to happen with inflation. We don't know what's going to happen with a recession. There is a sense that um, people are pulling back on spending particularly, uh, you know, uh, low-income folks because they're, they're, they're running out of money. Uh, yet we're also seeing, like, almost 400,000 jobs. I've had four conversations with four different uh, people, like, running from mechanics to, uh, you know, guys who drive uh, 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 trucks to haul stuff about the, the lack of job, uh, or I say the lack of people for jobs um, mm -hmm. and people getting offered jobs. I know Hall Stone, and he's like, I can't go to a quarry without getting offered a job. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and uh, what what's going on? And what are the people who are questioning as to like why people have lost faith in our institutions? What are they doing about it? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. The uh, um, I I think right now there's this sense that the uh sort of the economy is uh weird and unpredictable um and uh no one in power can sort of credibly say what's going on um and it, it's funny because people have this very negative sense about it when as you say um uh, employment is really strong that's really strong. Uh, like stronger than at any really other strong. time that we've ever. And, and and to the extent that, I mean, inflation is up, no doubt, but wages are also going up. And yeah. uh, that's that's a lot harder to um, uh, reverse than inflation, or I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it actually leads to funny sort of negative sense in, in some ways, I think, because um, you know, that piece I wrote about the, the, un the unanswered question, it was partly to sort of explain uh, youth disillusionment with the system and, and young people's disillusionment with uh, the Biden administration, because their, their poll numbers among young people are pretty poor. Um, but, you know, that gets to the fragility of the Democratic coalition, right? Because um, wages are up, the uh, employment is looking great. Um, it's also impossible for anyone young to buy a house and rent is out of control in not yeah. just in new york but in cities across the country um and I, I think that for a lot of older people in the democratic coalition um on the one hand uh they are thrilled that you know there are houses increasing in value over like over and over again um and then but they're also upset that this economy means it's like harder to find help right it's harder to get people at the quarry it's harder to get people even to work at your restaurant, you know, all these other things. Uh, so I think that's what contributes to this sort of across the board feeling of uh, we need someone to get this under control, even when ostensibly the numbers are fine, you know, or good even in, in terms of employment. Yeah, it's it's um, I was going to touch on the rent thing. What is, I mean, do you have a sense? I know you did a. Uh, um um uh, a podcast on that. We just recently. did a podcast on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? what 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 did you find? I mean, I, I you know, there is this, I, is it that we just simply have a, a lack of housing? Um, because usually the dynamic is, you know, when home prices are, well, I guess maybe home prices are going up and therefore it's like putting pressure on, on the rental market. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a really hard question to answer. Um, but again, like we just did a podcast episode about it, the politics of everything. You can listen to it. Um, we tried to figure this out. Um, and, and you know, we were talking about this is usually a New York story or it's a big city story. It's a New York, San Francisco story where, um, you know, they haven't been building enough housing. 
to meet demand. So rents are going up. Um, it, it's happening across the country now. Uh, Dean Baker, the economist, suggested one big part of it was that, um, you know, what work from home has done to the sort of white collar people is it has allowed them to go to these other cities that had not previously experienced these surging rental demand. So places like Phoenix and, right, and places right. like that where rent had not previously gone up. Um, that's Dean definitely was, happened even yeah. like I know upstate, uh, New York, exactly. uh, uh, mid Hudson Valley and, 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 um, the, you know, the Catskills in that area, I think there's a lot of people who've moved up there, um, you know, from, the the, the city and other places around the country who can work remotely. And a lot of people who are priced out of Silicon Valley, priced out of, out of, uh, the Bay area, um, you know, they're going, they're going to these other cities now that they're working remotely for, you know, tech companies and other places like that. And that drives up the prices for everyone else who would have been renting there before. And we're much more, I mean, the other part of it is since the, since the housing crisis, since the great recession, we're much more of a country of renters than we had been before, you know, like the, we, we had, there had been, uh, a lot of families that would have been homeowners in the beginning of this century are now trying to rent houses across the country. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and, and as, as I'm sure, you know, like we also sort of stopped building all over the place. We stopped building and now building new construction is expensive and with the supply chain difficult. And is there, is there like, you know, I know that in the wake of the 20, 2008 financial crisis, there was a lot of foreclosures, um, houses in like, um, in 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 housing development areas that hedge funders came in and bought up a ton of these houses um yeah. and i mean i i just recently had a somebody put my cell phone by mistake on like zillow on their their uh, zillow you know thing and i got you know for selling a piece of property somewhere in new york state i think i don't know and mm. i got literally like 75 phone calls Oh God! From people all around the country to buy this piece of property for whatever I guess it was eighty grand or something, and I kept you know like, I, I it, it's 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 there's something crazy going on, and I don't get the sense that anybody has a real sense of what that is. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I I find sort of interesting is that um you know the no one I know, I know a lot of people in, and you know, this is in Brooklyn and, and, and in New York, but I know a lot of people who are really struggling to find uh, somewhere to live and are worried about rent. And, and you don't get the sense from political leadership at the local or the national level that um, they're not, they're not coming out and saying, we have a plan for this. They're not, they're not even, they're not coming out and saying, here's what's going on, but they're especially not coming out and saying, here's, here's our plan to address this. There is no, there doesn't seem to be any acknowledgement of this whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's odd, and and my only explanation is just, again, like, not just that they're sort of oh they're old and out of touch, but just that like the people they hear from are comfortable homeowners, right? Like that's just yeah. who they hear from every day. And there only seem that if there is, say, from Biden, um, a response to some of the economic pressures that we're seeing, it's purely inflation based. Um, that's the only yeah. thing that they seem to be focusing on, um, which you know just buttresses your point about who they're hearing from. But also, uh, you know, people at the Fed, they're focused more on the inflationary pressures than the day to day uh, rent issues that people are facing. Yeah, and I mean, you know, uh, uh, this is this is again the a contradiction that underlies the entire pol the the entire party coalition. As I as I said, is that like house prices go up is great news for a huge portion of the Democratic electorate. Um, oh, great, house prices up. That's what we've been trying to work for for years and years. And uh, you know, it's it's also frozen out an entire generation from home ownership. Um, and as to your point, like, you know, Joe Biden his account tweeted about inflation yesterday. And, and it was like, here's my plan to address inflation. And it was like step one, let the fed do its job. Okay, great. That's yeah. a great message. And step two was like, get everyday prices down for people. But again, you know, uh, politicians will talk about gas prices before they talk about rent. I find that really uh, illuminating 
that they will they will go out there and say we we will reduce the price of gas before they will go out there and say we will we will help you make rent this month. Well, that I mean, is that a function of just like maybe there's more to do? They 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 can do stuff nationally. I mean, we just today uh, headlined two stories that um, I suspect are uh, linked. One being that OPEC has uh, agreed to sort of increase their supply by fifty uh, percent. I think it was. I'm not sure exactly how much, but they're they're going to increase their production. I should say. And also, Joe Biden is playing a visit uh, to yeah. Saudi Arabia. Um, you know, that's something. I, that theoretically, at least, um, should lower gas prices. I mean, we're going to be paying for this on the back end. It's we're sort of like right. it's a, a mortgage. <laughs> we get we get the lower gas prices now, and in uh, 15 years, you know, um, we're, we're we're dealing with uh, all sorts of you know new, uh, increasingly uh, worse problems with with climate change. Um, but the. I mean, is that a function of like, what could they do nationally to help rent outside of, you know, subsidizing it or putting on a moratorium of, for evictions or, uh, or, or what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a great question. I honestly, politically, I think, politically, I think it's nuts to associate yourself with the price of gas. Um, and, and to, and, and to take credit for it. I think it's nuts to take credit for it because you can beg, you can beg OPEC to increase supply, and you can cut or freeze the gas tax, but it's it's something that you have very little control over. It's an international market. Um, president presidents don't have a lot of power over the price of gas, uh, so I think I think it's you know politically I see why politicians talk about it. I see why uh, they pose outside of gas stations for for press conferences, but I don't think you want to associate yourself with. I'm the reason gas is up or gas is down with rent. You know, it would, it would take Congress. I think I would take, take Congress, but like, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're just talking about subsidizing the cost of living for families. Right. Like, and, and that's, that's just like, I mean, in other countries in Western Europe in particular, um, they have a lot of power over how much rent is and they they're on the same market in terms of gasoline. They're on the same international market as we are, but they have a lot of power over how much people pay for housing. And we should also say, we have a program in this country that subsidizes every single person who owns a home in this country. Yep. Mm. And that yep. is called mortgage interest deduction yep. and uh, t uh, on their tax. You can deduct the interest you pay on your mortgage. And that is basically, not basically, that is a housing subsidy. We, it is. Just to be clear, we have a housing subsidy in this country. It exists already. We and have not multiple. Only do, yeah, I mean, we, right. we, we do have some uh, public housing, direct public housing. But then we also have a, a housing subsidy. If you know anybody who has a mortgage on a house, understand they are being subsidized by the government to own that house. When you rent, you do not get that subsidy. No. And, and furthermore to that, we talked about uh, on, the, on the podcast, we talked about with, with Dean, uh, we talked about the the concept of rent control, a policy that a lot of economists hate. Um, Dean does not hate it. Dean Dean thinks it has its its uses. Uh, rent control, the government regu regulation that says, you know, your rent can't, can't increase, or your landlord can only increase your rent by this amount, or it has to be pegged to inflation, and it, it basically freezes your rent and limits how much can be increased. So it's not tied directly to the market. Economists hate this. They think it drives up the general cost of, of housing for everyone else. But we have rent control for owners, and it's called the 30-year 30 30 fixed-rate mortgage. Yeah. That, that's a program we invented a long, long, long yep. time ago to basically allow you to have rent control with your bank. If you have enough money for a down payment and you have good enough credit to get a loan, you get 30 years of rent control after which you own your property. Uh, so we we do that for people who can afford a down payment and who can afford a house. We don't do it for people who have to rent somewhere. It's such a pipe dream, but like, we, you know, Sweden has, uh, off the top of my head, they have rent control, which is basically I, I bargained collectively and centrally. Mm -hmm. um, and th there have been issues with it as well, but there's there's higher points and there's lower points, but it's within that range. Um, and I feel like at the very least, say, if 
the here in New York, if we had a different kind of mayor, um, there could be something negotiated like that. Uh, but unfortunately, developers in these large cities have such a chokehold over um, over our politics that that's that's at this current moment a, a, a long ways away. Yeah, I mean, New York, New York, New York has some of the strongest tenant protections protections in the country. It's much worse in other cities, but a lot of tenant protections. And you know, having covered this housing stuff in New York for a while, and having you know assigned stories on it when back when I was an editor, um, tenant protections don't mean a lot. You know, if uh, if it's on the books in the law, but you know, the tenant can't afford a lawyer or doesn't know his rights, um, and and so like you know, it's it's like you say. Um, we have we have decent regulations our rent control uh definitely could be stronger but it does exist more here than it does in most other cities um but you know a landlord can get away with a lot around here um and 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 just to reiterate on that 30 year mortgage that is a policy decision that we make mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. not that 30 year mortgage don't don't exist in in the wild they're they're um, we created that. Yeah, that yes, was most yes. people don't most people, most countries, I should say, don't have a 30 year mortgage. Yeah, the fixed rate, the 30 year fixed rate mortgage was a deliberate policy decision to encourage home ownership um, that worked really, really well for a generation of middle class white people, you know, and it, it did its job for a particular generation of middle class white people. And uh, but again, as I said, like. It was like single family housing rent control for 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 boomers and and some Gen Xers. <laughs>